Oh, and look, it's a nice military green. Hold on, so what's going on? Uh, they're getting on me. We just drove up. The person said you had to park across the street, and then we just drove up here, and he says, move or else. That's what I was told, and I said, who? And he said, the chief. So I said, well, have a conversation. And he's just like, I will. What's your move? I said, that's an order. He's like, quit that acting childish. I said, dude, order the people around is childish. You know? So where were you trying to park? I was just going to park here. Right it's, here. A, it's, a, it's a public lot, and if he says that <laughs> they work for us, then they should defer to the people they work for, right? So why not let folks park where they want? <laughs> and what was the last thing he said? Just because it's a public event doesn't mean you have a right to be here or something? It's all arbitrary, man. I don't know. Oh, I know it is. I'm, I'm just trying to uh, figure out exactly what is going on here. I don't see an inspection sticker. These are the gun ports here. Where's the inspection sticker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have been driving it around. Who had a question? I didn't hear it. I've got a question. I do not see an inspection sticker. That's a good point. It's registered. Uh, yeah, I noticed the license plate on the back, but there's no inspection I'm not sticker. Sure it has to have it. But I will find that out and then. Okay. Thank you. And your name is? Captain Russo. Captain Russo, thank yeah. you. What's the. It's on the road. In fact, I will find that out. All right, so I'll be able to get an answer. How are you doing? Okay. It may be, uh, it may be stuck on a seat in there somewhere. WBIN. Oh, where's that? Ballistic windows, I don't think they want to stick anything uh, on. But if not, we'll have it fixed by Monday. So when you say a, when you say rescue, like how would that how would this be used in that situation? How it's gonna be used if it, that's very controversial. Um, we're gonna use it hopefully as mainly primarily as a rescue vehicle. That could be rescuing people from natural disasters, man-made disasters, criminal criminal acts, um, downed officers, down civilians, evacuated civilians, whether it's being flooded zone or from a house next to a bank that your bank officer. The wide range is very open to use for it. has already been discussed, but we won't know what comes in two hours, an hour, or two months. All right, and one of the things that was on the application was that I thought it might be useful if something happened at the pump. You guys could you expand on that? I was yeah, not sure. It, it, it could be. Um, I think it's a more complicated area of terrorism, definition of terrorism. There really is no national definition of terrorism. I only really want to compensate on the terrible source of terrorism. Um, we need something to be able to help, help protect up with 40, 50, 60,000 people that come here. It's just going to prevent a terrorist act during a pump No, it would not. It would certainly help us respond to one. Radiologically protected would also be useful during the pump test, as we also have that capability to another resource given to us by the federal government. So, do you anticipate you do have to do We hope not, actually. We hope it never leaves the garage other than train And it's also the end of the squad truck that's been sold as a thing for this. We look at it as patrol operations, patrol operations support here for us. Patrol officers are going to be using it or may use it because it's much of our tactical. It's not strictly a tactical team vehicle. Everybody will be trained on how to get to work and use it for driving. So when you say the patrol officers will be using me, like we might be seeing this up and down the streets. No, 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 please. Okay. No, absolutely. <laughs> that's, not. that's what I wanted to check. What I mean by that. patrol officers will be trained how to use it to deploy it in an emergency. It's not strictly we call in a tactical team and wait for them to get here and bring the vehicle out. If Marlboro calls that they have an emergency that meets our requirements to deploy the vehicle, the patrol officers will be trained to get in it or get to Marlboro and assist Marlboro. Same as Swan, the chest, the same route. Basically, they, they, they'd be calling and asking for a full mutual aid. The only difference is 
instead of sending off in prison, we're going to send off in the back end because whatever they have going on justifies the use of that back end. Okay. Very well. Thank you very much, Captain. Appreciate your time. So can you tell me why you brought this sign out here to the Bearcat showing today? <laughs> well, actually, it's as I just mentioned, it's a quotation from a talk I gave a couple of weeks ago at the Keene Unitarian Universalist Church, but it was sponsored by New Hampshire Peace Action. Okay. And uh, the theme of my talk it was the amazing silence. Why the silence about all the wars and militarization of our country and militarization of the whole world, in fact. I don't know if, that was, I don't know if it's true that it was most of the opposition. There was a large amount of I would say the beginning of it. Then. Yeah, well, actually, what started it was um, Terry Clark, who's a city councilor here in the team. Uh, his son, Mike, uh, kind of spearheaded a petition drive to get signatures from folks all across Keene and uh, the area to oppose this. Uh, a number of Free State Project participants, including myself, did assist in that uh, petition drive. And it was really a decentralized effort. I mean, there was no one who was really in charge of anything. You know, um, somebody wrote the lyrics to thanks but no tags. Somebody else, you know, designed a flyer and had that printed out. Um, Yes, Free State Project participants were definitely involved, but also people who have been, you know, New Hampshire natives and people who have lived here a long time also were involved.